Ako ay taga NBA at ako ay natutuwang anyayang kayo dito sa larong ito. Two teams that uh, have had good runs over the last two years, but they're hoping that their third season in the NBA will produce finally a slot. Uh, ang Negros pumasok na sa finals minsan, pero ang Laguna puro muntik-muntik. And let's now discuss, along with Sai, Dali Francisco, the Slashers. This is a brand new Slasher lineup. Well, that's true, and um, the Negros Slashers will officially start their NBA season against the Laguna Lakers. Laguna, of course, winners of the uh, over the Cagayan de Oro Amigos. Itong Negros Slashers ay talaga nag-iba ang kanilang lineup at um, uh, mapapansin na natin na itong uh, Negros Slashers ay yung lineup na ginawa nila for this year. Very competitive and they've managed to get a lot of other players to fill in specific positions na nakakailangan nila dito sa kanilang pag-ubisa ng NBA season. They have retained, of course, the core of the Slashers. That's Cardell, Perioles, Romy De La Rosa, Leo Batog, and Bobby Willard to go with that. Rene Danielud natin at saka itong si John Lim, Sev, at uh, kung mapapansin natin yung acquisitions nila, si Ruben De La Rosa, Ega Ignacio, Dennis Madrid, Judge Primero. Itong apat na to, you can easily say na they play in three different positions. So, it's quite obvious na Negros just wants to fill in the slots na talagang nagkulang sila because wala na rin si Dorian Peña who's been carrying the cudgels for the Negros Lashers. Dorian Peña has been out of the Negro Slashers, he has transferred on to the Pasig uh, Rizal Pirates and that's the reason why talagang nungungulang itong Negro Slashers pero sinabi nga natin, it's a team game. A anybody can win, especially when you play as a team. On the other hand, Laguna now playing its second game, also here at home with a 13-point win on opening day against Cagayan de Oro. They feel good already, nakaisang panalo na. There they are on your screens. How do they feel going into this one with a new lineup that they're still getting accustomed to? Danny? You know, so even if you say that it's a new lineup that they're getting accustomed to, we can definitely say that they have managed to fill in all positions. Save dahil naman yung mga acquisitions nila. We have Jasper Ocampo already into the lineup of the Laguna Lakers. He will fill in the number one spot together with Roel Bravo. Eh, halos itong kopuna ng Laguna Lakers eh, nagkakilala na. As we find the first attack on the basket, Nick Dow taking care of business on the run. First two points of the ball game. First C at the uh, Negros here tonight. Dennis Madrid, however, will not be seeing action here. He is in civvies. He's alongside coach Jun Noel, maybe nursing still an injury. And we have a new face also. Um, there we have a shot by De La Rosa. Who's beginning to talk about the um, last name to see Robert uh, Pangasukandate. assistant coach ngayon ng Robert Season. Si Season. Siya ngayon ay uh, nandun na sa bench ng Negros. Nakausap din natin siya concern of Negros going into this game. Is their donut position today because they may not have the size to go up against the Laguna Lakers here. And this will force John Ferriol to play heavy minutes. Not only that, he'll be taking on Jeffrey Flowers. A towering 6-8 center for the Laguna Lakers. Anong kaibigan kong matalik yan? Ang galing na tao niyan. Ano nga ba ang pangalan niyan? Nakaligtaan. Nakasama ng tanghalian ay nakalimutan ba naman? Si Tonkin Sasuma nandito na rin sa NBA. Second day for him to see action. Here's De La Rosa. Cardell. Pop from a far three-pointers offline. Ball is being fought for in the hands of Matt Albert Flowers with a rejection. De La Rosa, 15-footer, a tad offline, and the rebound is controlled by Nicolau, who is clearly a force inside. Laguna starting off with a very tall lineup. Chris Clay driving down the middle, scores. The thing about Clay is that he is always an offensive threat, whether in the open court or on the half court. Ball game currently standing at 42. Well, it seems that Negros has been playing the outside, getting to the early goings of the first quarter. Mukayatang nasisindak sila sa kalakihan itong Laguna Lakers. But the point is, they have to set up their shooters, but challenge also the big guys of the Lakers. Here's De La Rosa inside four lane, nothing there. The rebound controlled by the Laguna Lakers. Only one shot per trip, except on one occasion where there was a defensive rebound. And Fowler, guilty of traveling. Is it Flower with an F or should it be with just Flower? Jeffrey Flower. Take a look at this. Index fast break. Negros has called this timeout to everyone because they don't want to make the 
damage. He's too hot to handle. We'll be back. Philippine Rabbit. Pull up by Garbel. So many misses already by Negros here in the early goals. And Laguna feels quite comfortable with the starting lineup. We've got Sasuma bringing the ball down at the NCB Simon. And that will not work. Flowers has a rebound. John Ferriol did a big job facing him. De La Rosa's dribble is interrupted by Simon and the ball swiftly returns to the Lakers. Sasuman has a shot. We've known him through the years, but that one just didn't go. Mawe Willard trying to set up the table into the corner to Garbel. The flip. It will not work. Rebound Flowers. Well, Sasuman. I don't Bundy. think Negros has a very good field goal person at this point, so. I think you could say one out of six or one out of seven. Because the only basket came from De La Rosa on a short stab, and there is an undergoal stab by Leo Batfog to end the long drought by the Negros uh, Slashers. But I would say that um, Etong Negros must be able to speed things up just to be able to outrun guys like Jeffrey Flowers. Simon. Kaya mo magantay si Ira Panganiban eh. Bakit? Kailangan ba ipasok? Oo, siyempre. Kasi gusto natin malaman kung ano lang nangyayari si Negros. Go ahead, Ira. Well, seven, no? Medyo jitters lang. Konting jitters lang yung sinasabi ko si Coach Junoel sa kanyang mga bata. Yung makikita natin play ngayon, ano? Medyo gusto nila kontrolin ito si Chris Clay. Pero mukhang sa nakikita natin, nahihirapan sila. Isa pang threat sa kanila, si B-Boy Simon. Isa pa sa magiging uh, problema nila. Pero hindi masyado. Ito si Flowers dahil malaki. Ang masarap panoorin ngayon, yung laro ng magkapatid na De La Rosa dahil first time nila magsasama sa isang team. Back to you, uh, Seb, uh, Danny. Okay, I think this is the first time the brothers are going to be together on a professional team. Simon. Flowers. Inside stab. No, and finally got it inside. Yan ang magiging malaking problema para sa Negro Slashes. Just before that field goal by Jeffrey Flowers, and Laguna was 4 out of 8. That's 50%. And Negros 3 out of 11. And what Negros wants to do right now is that they want to go out the big man because Laguna has been controlling the board so far. Cardell pops from top of the keyhole. It goes. It's a 3. I have the shooters in Mandania, no? They're just hoping that uh, they come out with the breaks of the inside just a tad here. By, by the way, also, uh, as you probably know, both are the former head coach of Serigal. It's also with Laguna. We'll take a short break here. It's a one-point game. There's a world-class refrigerator specially designed to last the first time. The 10-9 count. To the corner to Cardell. After that timeout earlier, Negros finally just settling down. And they're banging the boards harder inside. Although that one was rejected. Sasuman thinking of passing to play. Yes, at the right moment. And the lefty stab finds his hole. And if you notice, Laguna also wants to run in this ball game. And Negros Naman, they've been popping from the outside, hoping that it would fall for them. 12-9 tally. Less than six minutes to go. That was a fast break. Uh, quick pace that we're having uh, here in the open corner. It's going to ask guys to backpedal against play. Momentarily stripped the possession. Galarosa aims from afar. It does not go. Rebound control. Looked like the travel violation. McDowell in the meantime managing to establish control. Simon over to Flowers. We'll get it inside. And this is where Laguna can kill Negros here today. Well, most of their points are coming in that's inside the shaded area and uh, Negros having some difficulty trying to get back down on defense. Para sa akin nga, mas advantage so para sa Negros Lashes kasi meron kang Maui Willer who can run the break and you know, mukha yatang nagugulat na rin itong Negros kung bakit nakakatakbo ang Laguna Negros. Yes. Danny, I am taking a look, uh, look at the scorer's desk and I see four Negros Lashes just about ready to check in so the term platoon substitution is applicable here. It's quite surprising that we have a platoon substitution very early. And um, four minutes and 49 have just gone by in the first quarter. At uh, lamang nga itong Laguna by five points, 14 to 9. So I think he's changed the entire lineup on the floor. So reviewing the players, we have Judge Romero, De La Rosa, Aldrich Reyes. We have Ignacio also on the floor. 
Nothing, by the way, is the fifth man wearing jersey number 21. Five point lead. Enjoyed by Laguna Sasuman will unload. It will not work. Simon could have traveled there, but he's given the step. McDowell banging it inside. He is, does not have the widest of frames, but he is a tireless worker inside, and that should augur well for the campaign of Laguna. You know, what makes Laguna such a threat is that they uh, have mga slashers who can drive and draw, and then easily issue off a drop pass to the big guys, and that's a difficult part here because they need to adjust it to Negro slashers. It's either they body up on their men and just allow them from even entering or going for that first step. Delicado na sila. TJ Manotok takes us to the bench of the Laguna Lakers. TJ. Coach Edgar Dero wants his boys to watch out for John Friol at the post. Sabi niya, cut and mouse defense muna tayo and only commit when he makes his move in the paint. And second in offense, he wants his boys to move the ball better in offense. Don't think twice before he swing the ball. It's a very movement, guys. So Friol continues to be a threat as far as the Lakers are concerned. Meanwhile, a foul by Sasuma is first. Counting the team fouls, uh, we've been... 50 as far as fouls are concerned. Laguna with two Negros has a clean slate. Yeah, that's why we're mobilis mobilis itong first quarter. Eh, but um, kapansin, kapansin, uh, normally in a very fast-paced ball game, itong Negros should be able to get a lot of points, pero they're still at nine points. Uh, Agai Ignacio in the meantime gives them a baseline jumper for his first set of points. It's a 14-11 count. Now the pressure being applied by Negros trying to break up the dribblers of Laguna. And this will force the turnover. Some bola po punta dito sa panin ng Negro Slashers. And Laguna quickly responds by bringing Noel Bravo, a nice spunky point guard also. Katulad na rin ni Aldrich Reyes, yung kanyang counterpart sa Negro Slashers. And now with the ball and the choice is Reyes, Fox and 15 has a decent shot in that sector. And you have to keep in mind there was an era, or especially during Bonnie Garcia 7, Laguna loved to trap a lot, so they're not unaccustomed with all great pass inside by Clay to Flowers. Now, Ira, I have to say it, he really blossomed in that play. <laughs> Ira was waiting for me to say that we were discussing it during the pre production for this presentation here tonight. Here's Judge Romero, draws a keyhole. Romero says, Let me try a lefty. Yes, it's a long one, it's a three. I don't know, masasabi ko yun. Nagugulat na rin itong Laguna Lakers kung bakit tabla na po ang laban. At dahil na rin yan sa pressure na ipinapakita ng Negros last, especially doon sa mga nagdadala ng bola siya. It looks like it is the speed team of Negros that is currently on the floor. De La Rosa also accustomed to the trap which Manila used to do quite a lot during the championship season. Play shot will not work. And here comes De La Rosa. Scoops it over to Reyes. Reyes anxious for a basket. Lefty shot will not work. And off the rebound, we've got a foul. And as Jim Noel will always say, you are now playing slasher basketball. But that was a foul given up by the Laguna Lakers. And in that bit of action, wala. Si Chris Clay at si Jeffrey Flowers. They're the last men down the floor on defense. When we return, more of this opening period and more of your NBA. Visiting Negro Slashers, unfolding a 7-2 run, enabling them to tie up this ball game now with 16 apiece. There is a rumor that tomorrow is the birthday of director Almer. One wonders if that is true, if he actually had the birthday or not. But we uh, have yet to be invited. Yes, and be I think because of the uh, passing review, the usual uh, <laughs> parade of beauty, I think he's around. And I think we're going to get invited you, you know, later. You know, a lot of nice places on the way home from here. <laughs> of course, we're in Santa Cruz Laguna. It's a pleasure to have you on board for this great battle, which is really living up to its building. That is rejected. Here comes Bravo pushing it hard to play. Play on the attack, and he's fouled upon flight. Hey, guy, Ignacio will pick up this personal foul. It's going to be his first. But you know, one thing good about this move by Chris Clay is that itong si Ega Ignacio, pinakita niya that he's willing to challenge Chris Clay. And that's going to be a good sign for the Negro Slashers. No? They're not giving up yes, on exactly. anyone. Compared to the early minutes where in the world, uh, watching, they were planted, stuck on their feet, just watching the breaks 
of the Laguna Lakers. By the way, we also mentioned Bob Perasol is now assisting Ed Cordero. So a lot of our former head coaches, it's still a job, no? They step in and they are so valuable, like uh, Bev Alvarez, the team owner of Negros, was telling me, Robert Season's value is that they can spread more of the work nowadays, scouting, uh, videotape watching, preparation, actually. That's why you have a coaching staff. In Vineto, you uh, leave it up to the coach. You've got a lot of other important elements in the coaching staff. Exactly. Of nothing shot, no good. Follow up works. Napakarami naman kaliwete rito sa larong ito. Ano ano? Ayaw at panganiban, hindi tayo nakapunta sa iyo kanina dahil sa timeout natin. What's the latest from your side of the floor? Well, kung nakikita nyo, sabi mo kayo na siya pinag-uusapan nyo, parang gustong tumakbo ng tumakbo nitong slashers. Well, number one kasi, basically, ang dahilan, masyadong malaki yung mga kalaban nila. And as you mentioned kanina, walang legitimate center ang negro slashers na naglalaro ngayon. They will be depending on what? Egay Ignacio, they will be depending on John Periols para maglaro ng centro nila. So yung mga malalaki forwards nila, yun yung aasahan nila. And they cannot do that, do this the whole game. Dahil meron totoong center dentro itong uh, Lakers na nagbibigay ng sakit ng ulo sa kanila. Sir, Danny? Exactly. And what they're trying to do, Ira, is to apply a lot of spunk, a lot of hustle to offset that height deficiency that they have encountered. In the meantime, that was a bust out by B-Boy Simon. Simon so far in the game with four points. Bravo. One of our journeymen here in the NBA. Ang bilirungan natin sa kanya as we take a look at Bo Perezol, the man we were talking about earlier. Ang ilang uniforme mo na ba yan, Ruel? Pang-apat, sabi niya. At uh, sinabi niya, at least minamahal daw siya. Oo, oh, naka, meron pa rin uh, nagtitiwala sa kanya. Uh -oh. Tumana siya sa Pasig, sa Negro, sa Pampanga, at ngayon sa Laguna. Samantala, sa inyong screens, nandito si Aldrich Reyes. Si Aldrich galing naman sa Sox Sargen. Traveling violation. Jun Noel is the Zen master on, on that side of the floor, you know? The entire uh, coaching staff, as you take a look at, take a look rather at Dennis Madrid. Medyo mga bata pa, enthusiastic siya. Cool lang tayo. Malayo pa yan. Cool lang. Kaya nasa first quarter pala mo itong laro nito. Simon in a favorite spot. And I think the advantage of having flowers inside, B-Boy will say, I'll shoot. Somebody. I'll shoot, yes. <laughs> Alam niya na may kukuha ng rebound. And um, the advantage of having Jeffrey Flowers on the defensive end is that he can swat away a lot of shots and get the defensive boards. And this can touch on the fast break. Judge Romero with his second rainbow connection. He has a sum of eight in this opening quarter, which is now winding down to a minute and 20. Simon Travel. And now it's nice to see that Ed Cordero, who was quite a shooter during his collegiate days and even in his professional career, is now coaching B-Boy Simon, so he knows the plays that can circle around a shooter like in the like the likes rather of B-Boy Simon. Garcia, the flying carpet steps in for B-Boy Simon. Looks like Flowers will get his first rest. And Ryan Bernardo is on the floor for the very first time. And this will signal the entry of John Ferrios also for the Negro Slashers. Together with Romy De La Rosa, who will be replacing his brother. I was uh, kidding um, Bebs Alvarez, team owner of uh, Negros, and saying, now you have twins on your floor, <laughs> uh, on your team, that is. In the meantime, Reyes trying to organize the offensive flow. Two-man game. Could be a pick and roll with Ferriols waiting. And Ferriols unable to plant the screen, that is. Ferriols leads to it. Tries to pound it against Clay. No success. Here comes Bravo. Aldrich Reyes is on top of him. That's a good cover. Excellent uh, defensive matchup. Featuring Bravo and Reyes. Inside we go to Bernardo a little more mobility as he got a foul that time from Ferriols, his first. By the way, I failed to inform you that Laguna already in the one-on-one -on -one penalty as they have committed already their 15th foul, while on the other hand, Negros has been quite uh, thrifty in that department with only two. In three-point shooting, it's been Negros that's been more proficient. The three out of five from that sector while from the rainbow arc, Laguna has not hit in four tries you know how explosive this laguna lakers squad is is the fact that we are getting everybody involved chris clay is not scoring heavily here in the first quarter however meron siya mga pasa no dun sa loob katulad dito kay bernardo is taking some free throws right right now and one of the things i've always liked about clay is his pacing 
go through the first three quarters, hit a uh, few shots, and then really burn the opposition in the final quarter. Because he knows he will have a lot of minutes. That's a great pass inside. Excellent look. And Della Rosa will be trooping to the line after that foul by Bernardo, his first. What a great cut by Della Rosa, the foul was from behind against Bernardo dahil naman wala naman si Jeffrey Flowers dito so they can easily challenge the likes of a Nick Dow and a Bernardo for the offensive rebounds simply the first option yung play na yun ano? the cutter yung, cutter. yung unang pasa usually from the uh, to the cutter as we take a look at Mr. Bev Alvarez well, sinabi mo ka simplihan ng play na yun eh, you can only do that kind of a play if you spread out your offense no? because it will force your defender to move alongside you. Kasi pag masyadong masikip, saan kayo pupunta niya? In the meantime, a heist at the midcourt area. Great passing by Negros. De La Rosa stretches, but to no avail. Here comes a turnaround shot by Ignacio. Oh, will fail. And the rebound controlled by Garcia as we wind down to the last six seconds of the first set of 12. Is Bravo aware of the clock? He is definitely so, but the shot will not work. There he goes. Uh, this is close, this is tight, this is a great one, and we're just beginning your Wednesday presentation of your NBA continues here in Santa Cruz Laguna in just a short, short while. They have responded, no, and uh, positively, because you've got Primero hitting two three-point baskets. Uh, Laguna, on the other hand, I feel that there's a little bit of overconfidence in the first quarter because they've got yes. eight points coming from Jeffrey Flowers, but Jeffrey Flowers, towards the end of the first qu quarter, could not run back down on defense, and that is well. Namayani naman tong Negros Lasus kaya digit ang ating laban. To go back to your point about the starting unit not clicking, suddenly na feel na second unit ba binubugbug namin sa practice itong first unit kami nga magpakita sa kanila. Ito ni pagkakatao natin. Ayon lahat, ayon lima. In the meantime, ball is loose. I like the way Judge Romero is playing here during his uh, stint off the bench. Away with Lar organizing the offense. Oh, yes! And that's going to be foul number two against Ryan Bernardo. And we're talking about that donut position na kakulangan na itong Negro Slasher. Eh, pinakita naman ni Ignacio na kahit na is playing number four, he can easily go for that finger roll. Ignacio, Pampanga, the real disadvantage he had was he had to play behind several great big men like Long David, Dave Bautista, even Norman Gonzalez uh, during a stretch. And so playing time was really a prime commodity, difficult to slice up. Well, I'm sure itong Laguna Lakers this time are thinking, Nako, itong mga malalaki ng Negros ay uuumpisa na rin. In the meantime, Negros with its first face of the lead, 25-23. 30-second timeout by the Lakers. We'll be right back. Are we hanging on? We will hang on. Nanda, our floor director, has her hands all tied up like her hair. <laughs> it's all going in 10 different directions. In the meantime, Ed Cordero sensing uh, this is not good. Sigurado, and I'm sure he's going to give instructions because the press of Negro Slashes at this point. Let's try to listen in. I'm going to take unable to suit up. He's together with his wife, Susan, over there. Lamo si Ed Cordero has had coaching experience. Of course, he was with our technical committee last year. Ed Cordero coaching, I, if I remember correctly, a team named Ama Computer College in the, the Philippine Basketball League. You know, they forced a timeout and Bieber Simon called a 30-second timeout. Alam na, alam na ni Coach Ed Cordero kung ano yung naging problema nila. Ryan Bernardo gets this shot in. And the meantime, here's Primero. You know, save some numbers that we have for the first quarter. Namayani nga Laguna, 17 rebounds as against 14. Pero itong Negros got 8 offensive rebounds. Nung wala si Jeffrey Flowers. But Laguna got 12 defensive rebounds. And that's because of the presence of a Jeffrey Flowers. Pero nung nawala siya, Sakaro Mimate, oh. uh, Negros. 
And while you're on the subject, I think it is so clear, and Bebs Alvarez was talking about this at lunch also, that they had to gang rebound here tonight because they were really fearful over the fact that they had to play in the land of the Giants here today. A foul on Nikdal, his second. Nikdal, a former FEU Tamarau, Willar, trying to lob it inside to Perios, no chance to do so. Hold it. What's the whistle? It's illegal, illegal defense, yes. yes. And I believe that's going to be called against Nick Dow. Because he leaves this Ega Ignacio at the post and he hesitates whether to double or not. And it will be an inbound for the Negro Slashers. I failed to mention that the referee's crew is made up of referee's crew, Stan and Banica. They have 15, 24, 21 as their jerseys. Ferriol is going lefty there. Inside for a oh, we've got a lot of flyers there. Ignacio not no time to get up and back down from a challenge. Woo, great rebounding by Negros there. That's true, and that's going to be foul number three against Nick Dow. And Coach Jun Noel feeling like Napoleon Bonaparte as he made a conquest there because any coach, when he sees that, he likes the effort. He likes the effort, and this forces the coaching staff of the Laguna Lakers to tap Jeffrey Flowers back into the ballgame. And you don't want Negros to establish this kind of a game where they nararamdaman nila yung intensity level nila umaki at dahil mahirap na pigilin and some substitutions made by Coach Ed Cordero, he feels also the pressure kasi yes. he, they, he cannot seem or his team cannot seem to shake off the slashers here in the second quarter. Perriols with that shot, it does not work and Garcia flying has to give it up. One wonders why he did not want to dribble. Well, with Wellar, one of our steals leaders around, I think he had to take, think twice. Team foul against the uh, Slashers. It is on Wellar. His first. We're tied at 25. This is our fourth deadlock. First in the second period. There's Flowers in the corner. Rolls it outside to Bravo. Takes a peek inside, decides to charge through a little too strong. Baselides with the waltz. No boxing out on the part of the Slashers, and they will have to pay the price for that one. Yes. By the way, you, you just uh, missed the coverage of Bob Novales and Butch Maniego. They covered the Nueva Ecija victory against Suriga 99-91 over there at the Urias Gym in Butuan City. Why do they have the ladies tonight? Answer me that. <laughs> Who made, the schedule? Who made the schedule tonight? <laughs> Not that I don't like DJ and Ira, but it's unfair. <laughs> a foul was called against Jeffrey Flowers, and number two against okay. Jeffrey Flowers. Now, Ira, don't try wearing a dress, please. <laughs> Fair yards, it's a fall away, it's coming, it won't work. Well, R takes it away from the Giants. In the meantime, Laguna has to recapture the fire of the opening minutes. They're working on that right now. Here comes Bravo. He may spark new life into this attack. Simon fakes, fires, will get it. Well, Laguna is getting their points off the fast break, and it looks like this time around, Chico Noel must be able to pace his players very well. Correct. Maybe that second unit he fielded earlier might do the trick again, but uh, suddenly it's a four-point lead. Ferrios has been struggling with a one-of-eight performance from the field. Not that he has not had the looks. In the meantime, here comes Laguna running, running, running. Basilides losing it. But Ed Cordero had the funniest expression of all, being a former <laughs> head of the technical staff. He's wondering, should I complain? I think he should, <laughs> if he feels like it. <laughs> he was on the receiving end of all the complaints in the last first two years of the NBA, so he's adjusting to the new role. Denied the wing, denied the wing. At saka, grabe mag ng mga manlalaro itong dalawang coaches, no? Actually, natama, natama. lang tayo sa second quarter. They're trying to find the right combination and they're trying to match up very well against each other. There's Jonathan Cardell, due for some kind of explosion and Negros hopeful for that back off. You never give up on your teammate, even if he misses. And yan ang ginawa ni Leo Batog. And um, I'm sure Ed Cordero is dumbfounded kung bakit pa nakakakuha ng offensive rebound. Ang sama na nga namang field goal percentage ng Negros. Correct, correct. Eh, sa tiyaga at sipag, nakakakuha pa ng rebound. 
Matala sa mga nagtatanaw sa atong subong, dira sa Negro, sa Bacolod, sa Silay, sa Kabangkalan, mga gabi sa inyong tanan. Aridi ang inyong Negro Slashers, tight game, 29-27 count, but Og can complete the three-point play and the rebound controlled by the Lakers. Masilidis. But Og with the bump. FedEx fast break being fashioned out. You'd love to have Bravo spearheading the attack because he knows how to read the options on the floor. In fact, he is also an option. Here's Sasuman back on the floor. Inside we go to Fires. They'll try the power move and heal. It will not go in. Michael Garcia with a flight. No connection. Ball in the hands of the Lakers. Basilides on the baseline. Outside now, they go to Sasuman, the long flip. No, Sasuman can't sink it. Ooh, Garcia was so high. Oh. He was above the window. And he was above Jeffrey Flowers. Watch this. Suddenly, a hand will be there. I told you he was Aladdin in his other life. Matt Fogg says this is the way to stab inside Perios. Nothing. One out of nine by Perios. And that's close range. Most of them at least. Here's Garcia sensing the kill. That goes awry. Basilides is hammered. Both teams giving up some offensive rebounds to their opponents. Pero tabla pa rin ang ating laban, 29-29, and uh, looks like in team foul situation ng Laguna, already with five team fouls. However, itong Negros, only three team fouls so far. And that last foul was the first on Jonadel Cartel, sending Basilides to the line. First by Basilides, yes. Basilides had only eight minutes of action in their first game against Cagayan de Oro, but still managed to score four points. With the departure of many of the almost the four or five players from Laguna, Pasilita is really getting a little more playing time now. Aldrich Reyes trying to organize. Here's Perioz. Has been in an uphill struggle here. That's one of ten. Sasuman still in the backcourt. Will he get it across in time? One wonders. No, it's an eight-second violation. Well, Mr. Sasuman, welcome to the NBA. Mabilis po ang ating pagtawid ng ating half court. It will only take eight seconds before you're called for a, for a violation. And um, you don't need to dribble that ball. You need to pass it off, especially when you're pressured because you've got teammates who are open. And once you issue that pass across the half court, safe ka na. Kasi mararamdaman mo, yung pressure ng depensa, it will begin to settle down. Excellent illustration of that one, Danny. In the meantime, here comes the walls. Short pass inside. There's heavy traffic. There's a prayer being put up. No answer. Too tight yung naging opensa ng Negros in that bit of action. Balik na sa ating laro si Chris Clay. And Masilidis just collared his third rebound. So Suman with a spin around. Much... Too much muscle, that is. Flowers with so many hands getting in the way. Here's Jonadel Cardell. Stops, pops, uses the glass. Oh, Lamobas. Follow up. One of 11. Very unlikely for a John Perios to be missing at point blank range. However, he picks up a foul. He's going to go to the free throw line. But if you just imagine if he made. Half of those 11 field goals, then probably Negros will be out by six points. Negros is hopeful that maybe the free throws will settle him down. We'll take a short break, but we'll be on the other side of it, still here in Laguna. Meet Just quickly now, and I'm doing this for some friends of the Ateneo de Manila High School class of 76. They're inviting you to enjoy the music of the 70s and the 80s on March 4 this year at 7 p.m. at the Ateneo de Manila High School covered courts. They've got a concert featuring Pido with Taekwondo, Elements Child of Morning, and Parliament Syndicate. This is for a good cause, and this is for the Faculty Development Fund of the Grade School and the High School. Get your tickets soon. That's March 4. Keep that in mind. Now, Ferriols is on the line. Uh, maybe the free throws may change the, the winds of change, so to speak. 
That's highly unusual. One of eleven. Ang dami din malapit. May, pero may ganun dali, no? Kung minsan, yeah. ang lapit na... Like you, you've made your... Uh, most of your baskets. Pero, pero may araw talagang kahit anong gawin mo, no? Parang nag-iba yung pulso mo. Malakas ang pulso mo. But um, then again, no, you just like to get those free throws. We've got a steal by Negros. So it is clear that the press is working for Negros. So what is Laguna not doing correctly? You know, what's happening to Laguna right now is that they are not looking forward. They're looking at their dribble. Ang hinahanap nila kung saan sila lulusot. Tingnan nila kung sino mauna sa kanila ay maaaring may libre na. Garcia, short pass to Flowers. And there's a push. Ito yung sinasabi natin, sir, that they are just so concerned about bringing the ball up. That they are just looking at themselves. Correct, correct. I'd like to go back to that point because such an important item that you mentioned. They're more concerned with the uh, dribble rather with the pass. Ira, what you got? Well, yun yung uh, napapansin ka nila itong si uh, Coach Junoel lang. Ano? Number one, masyadong maraming ginagawang points sa loob itong Laguna Lakers that which he wants to address. Yung sinabi niya doon sa rebound ng kanyang mga bata, hit ka muna patagilid bago ka tumalon for rebound. Try to get your man out of the way before you try to get the rebound. Kasi ang nangyayari, mas malaki sa kanila. Yung mga tao nila, pag sinabayan nila, nauuna sa kanila. Chef, Danny? Valuable point, Ira, because as Danny would know, and uh, Danny has been a center all... Have you always been a center all your life? Yeah. Talaga? Kahit kung Grade school, uh, grade school ka naglalaro ako ng forward. Pero yun yung sinas yung kinikwento ni Ira. Ramdamin mo muna bago ka lumipas. Okay. Eh. I mean, Sam, it's on the floor. It's a foot race. Sasuman with leading the three-on-one. They succeed. And Laguna is back in front, 35-33. TJ, what do you have from the Lakers? Guys, as you mentioned earlier, Laguna is having a problem with the press of Negros. Coach Edward wants them to relax on the press. First of all, look if there's a double, and if, if there is a double, don't challenge it. Step back, reverse it, and swing the ball, and then attack the press from the other side, guys. Exactly. Same point as Danny mentioned, but amplified just a tad there by TJ. Thank you for that report. And the ball will go to Negros. Will there be a correction? No. <laughs> Is Asuman pointing at the replay? Just hold the Pointing at the replay. Para to the side. At the video wall. Panorin mo ref. But you know the call has been made so the ball will go to the negro side. The referees are not going to stop and rewind the tape I tell you. Ito naman, pag-uusapan natin itong negro. Ito may offense ato no? I just like to point out that what they can do is just try to draw out draw out a Jeffrey Flowers in case of too much dribbling on the part of Alex Reyes. If they can put a tall guy who can shoot from the perimeter, he will be able to draw out Jeffrey Flowers. Yes. Hit one, hit twice. Mapipilitan talaga sundan ni Jeffrey Flowers. And it's going to leave a very big opening to her shaded area para sa Negro Slashers. Ray brings it across. Pokes it over to Flowers to jam the hole. He has 12 points in this opening half, which is now down to 4 and 33. Laguna with a four-point swing. After we were tied last with 33. Wellar takes a look inside. Shot clock reduced to three. And Laguna doing a good job of taking the ball away, but say that also for Negros. And there's a foul against Clay. Number one against Chris Clay, and he cannot seem to get the idea of the momentum. It's just that Laguna just wants to pick off and get those fast breaks. Pero itong Negros ay gusto nilang subduin itong fast breaking attack ng Lakers. And the reason why the Lakers want to do that is that nahihirapan talaga sila dun sa press ng Negros. Kaya pinipilit nila na itakbo ang laro nito. Because they're really expending a lot of energy trying just to get the ball across. So in the meantime, Ignacio takes care of the first. We are in the one-on-one -on -one bonus in as much as 17 fouls have been called against Laguna. In fact, they had more also compared to Negros in the opening quarter, 6-2. to two. This second period is down to 4 minutes and 9. By the way, when halftime swings around, take a look at the Tagisa ng Lakas sa Laguna highlights. We'll take a look at an interesting event happening here, that happened here in Laguna. 
Then it also really trying to convert on the way. Back to ball, Hawk play force to pass off. Chris Bade swings it outside. Over now to Chris Clay, looking for his supply of Chris, but can't pass. The penetration inside. It will no, not work. It's like a pot down in three feet, doesn't want to drop. <laughs> want to throw the club away. But those are the breaks of the game. De La Rosa on the outside. Thought about shooting. Well, not them. Baseline flip. One of the most difficult spots on the floor, that baseline. But I would say that was a good shot. Again, yes, yes, trying to draw out okay. Jeffrey Flowers. Simon can't nail it. And the rebound controlled by Ignacio. Here's De La Rosa, right wing attack. Lobs it from three-point distance. No success. Ignatan has handled it. However, the ball will stay with the Negro Slashers. No fear slam dunk coming up. Roll the tape. Let it roll. And this one is our first of the day. I thought Flowers would do a Tarzan up up there. Judge Primero had a good first quarter. Strip of possession by Simon. Good defensive job there. And Ognatan grappling with Flowers. Well, I'm wondering how many seconds are left in the shot clock. 11 seconds for the Negro Slashers. And Jeff Flowers gets replaced. Ito yung sinasabi natin na kailangan gawin ni Coach Ed Cordero yung pagpipacing sa mga malalaki niyang tao. Yes, and uh, we all know Laguna, this venue, not exactly the coolest of venues. The advantage Flowers has is we're not playing in the afternoon when it's uh, scorching hot. Yes. In the meantime, Basilidas with the waltz. Basilidas applies to Greg. Goes outside to play. Play down the baseline. Pulls up. Hot it is. And Chris Clay with a six-point game. 39-37. Laguna with a slight edge. Wellar peeks inside. Nowhere to go. Shot clock reduced to eight. Wellar lobs it. And there is De La Rosa to the rescue. De La Rosa through the years has really had a good nose for the ball. Alam niya kung saan malalaglag at mauhulog yung bola. I was looking at Coach Ed Cordero and I could just read his lips. Ay nako, and we've got a steal by De La Rosa. Ito hindi lang ay nako, ay 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 ay, counted yan. So four quick points now for De La Rosa and the lead swings back to the Negro Slashers, 41 to 39. Clay with a dribbling problem and a foul on Clay. And Ignacio is sprawled on the floor. Time out, time out. When I feel that they don't see Chris Clay, not a challenge now. Ni Romy De La Rosa. Yes. However, they don't see Ignacio could have twisted something. And Ignacio picks himself up. And in the meantime, we're going to take a break for a timeout requested by Ed Cordero of the Lakers. Laron and Laguna, eh, talagang, they are falling into the trap being set by the Negro Slashers. Very clearly so. Come into my web. Away we are. Third year already with this team. Just some haligin itong kupuna na ito. Ferios, he is fouled. But one thing, if you have a franchise player like Ferios, he'll continue to go to it no matter what struggle he's going through because somewhere, somewhere it'll even out. Number one against Chris Bate, but the eighth team foul of the Laguna Lakers. Laguna giving up a lot of fouls, and this is what we're talking about. Probably a case of um, overconfidence beginning to set in against the Negro Slashers, considering that Negros is playing without a legitimate center. Correct. Okay, come up with all the expressions when it rains, it pours. Uh, Woke up on the wrong side of the bed. There are days like that. And we've got a report also as John Ferriose hits his second free throw that it was Ferriose and wait. No? That's correct. And uh, I have it in good word that he lost as much as 15 pounds. I really th uh, thought that he was on the heavy side last year. Play. And go. Just such an intelligent player, Tom si Chris Clay. Narinig na niya pito. So ano pang gagawin niya? Eh? Go for the basket, possible three-point play for Chris Clay. Judge Romero is given this foul, as that play indicates in the team foul count of Negros. That will be a total of five. 
42-41 count, one point negative lead, but that could change quickly for the free throw from play. Bonus shot. It won't be so as Ferriols colors that rebound. Ferriols already with seven in this first half. We're down to a minute and 25. Ferriols asking for it inside. Willar apologizing, couldn't pass it quickly. Ognathan, isolated, five on the shot clock. Willar throws it up with a wind and a, with a prayer and a song, actually. Why right, bring it down when you see Jeff Flowers in front of you? Yes, and the shot clock was completely winding down. So mark that as a three-point lead now for Negros as Bade has the ball roll off his uniform. Nagiging impatient itong offense ng Laguna Lakers. If you notice, if they cannot seem to get a fast break in the nila, iposting na kagad natin si Jeffrey Flowers. Eh, kaya kakayanin niya sa ilalim. And why not? Si Flowers, eh, nangunguna na rin para sa kupo na ng Laguna with 12 points. But mukhang pagod na rin ito si Flowers every time he gets challenged. Bade with a good steal. Three on one. They have the numbers. Clay gone. Now you might say, why didn't Chris Bade give it up quickly? There's such a thing as timing also. He didn't feel that it was right yet. 44-43 count. Negros with a slight lead. Slashers press the timeout buzzer. I just love timeouts. What people say when the coaches finish that. Oh, no, fight, fight, fight. Let's go, boys. <laughs> but nowadays, I still go, don't get it. When you do something good, <laughs> In the meantime, we're down to the final 27 seconds again. Earlier today, Nueva Ecija scoring its first win against the Suriga Warriors, 99-91. Melios. Melios still, shot clock at 8. Ugnatan checking down. He had a tough angle to work with. Ugnatan with his first uh, pair of points. Bravo loves this part of the ball game when there's hardly any time. But really no shot. 24 good minutes in basketball have been played and 24 more waiting for us. But first things first, we've got to go through halftime. And we've got a feature on a big event here in Laguna. And we'll take a look at our tapes, rewind them just a bit, and present to you the highlights of this first half. We'll try to get some reports from Ira and DJ as well. But so much more when your NBA continues here in Laguna. The city of Laguna held their own Sport of Sports Fest just to celebrate the opening of the season. They called it Tagisa ng Lakas sa Laguna. This sports fest had a lot of sports including track and field, swimming, and believe it or not, even archery. So let's take a look at the highlights of Tagisa ng Lakas sa Laguna. Passes have been responding well. Si Coach Ed has been using only that 5, 6, 7 player rotation and nahihirapan talaga sila dahil naman itong Negros eh, patay sindi rin yung kanilang pagpapres and it has caught the Laguna Lakers off track. Exactly. We had some great moments in that first half. Let's roll the tape and Danny Francisco will put the captions on those great moments. Well, in the first quarter, we were talking about the Negro Slashers. A little bit erratic, but the baseline jumper coming from De La Rosa would do wonder for them. A swat by Jeffrey Flowers, one of the defensive stops of Laguna. Je well, Chris Clay will get this drive. Chris Clay, the silent operator with 10 points so far. And we will see a reverse, a difficult reverse by Leo Batog. Negros was down, but once the second unit came in, iba na ang kanilang tema ng kanilang laro. At makikita nga natin, may steal, makukuha ni Cardell. At simple pasa kay John Perios. Perios struggling from the field, only with five points. But those medium range jumpers, they have to fall in. A quick pass by Chris Clay to Jeffrey Flowers. Would score the two points for Laguna. Primero with an offensive rebound against Flowers getting this basket. And Jeffrey Flowers, sana ko nagkamali doon. And Pivo Simon will touch off a fast break by the Laguna Lakers. Laguna was up by 1, 23 to 22. Come the second quarter, Ega Ignacio running the number four spot, running the wings, getting that layup plus a foul coming from Ryan Bernardo. A follow-up 
by Barcelides for the Laguna Lakers. Simon will get his fast break. Few and far between ang mga naging fast break right, ng Laguna yes. Lakers and that's a difficult thing there. Wala yung kanilang consistency but Og will challenge the big guys and will get on the third offensive recovery a putback and the press of Negros will work. De La Rosa with a simple drive down the middle which will be countered by Don King Sasuman who will get up his own steal plus a layup against Aldrich Reyes but more importantly Etong one two punch ng Laguna Lakers. Yung kanila mga tilams. Clay, what a pass to Flowers for that slam. Flowers so far leading the charge of Laguna with 12 points together with 9 rebounds. Pero ito si De La Rosa. Can I pick up a pocket Chris? <laughs> Going for this layup. De La Rosa is leading the charge with the Negro Slashers on the other hand with 11 points. We'll take a look at the simple layup by Chris Clay. But Negros has held on in the first half. They're up by 3 and suddenly Negros... Are, they are beginning to feel that Good, yeah. kaya pala natin yes. tong Laguna Lakers despite the fact that they've got two films very prolific and mapigil lang si Jeffrey Flowers malamang sa second half may pagkakataon talaga so tong Lakers let's just keep on running and I know we're dateless tonight they have Butch and uh, Bob have Rhea and uh, Lexi <laughs> but I don't mind because I don't mind I don't mind yes we have two very hard working gentlemen and I'm sure uh, they will smile when we present them DJ Manotok starts up with the Lakers and I'm sure he'll send it over to the other side of the floor no Ayra Panganiban is not wearing a dress DJ <laughs> I'm not wearing a dress but at the half time coach actually there I said one thing the only way we're going to lose this game is if Negros breaks our half court set and that's the reason why they keep pressing half court and full court he said first and foremost on the half court pressure he, uh, Lagu, uh, Negros is trying to break their set he said because of this he wants quicker ball movement and better spacing amongst his boys in the half court set secondly in the full court press as Danny mentioned earlier in the game um, Laguna has to watch out with a double team he said when they inbound the ball pull it back relax take a look at those doubles and if there's a double swing it to the reverse side and try to attack the pass from there so we'll see how Laguna will fare with the pressure of Negros in the second half let's go to Ira with uh, Negros Lasser thank you TJ Chef hindi ako nagdadamit nagpapalda ako mga kapapayan mga kapapayan ako dun sa loob ng tag out ng Negros Lasser number one kailangan mag role playing sila because wala nga sila legitimate center everybody will have to play their part play your rule sabi nga nito si uh, Coach Junoel, play your rule para naman makita ninyo kung ano yung dapat ninyong gawin. Number two, kailangan nila, they, they noticed na, na bumabagsak na sa trap nila itong Laguna Lakers. So keep the pressure, keep the press, kailangan lang malito ng malito ang Lakers para patuloy na nakukuha nila yung bola. Ang isa lang napansin nila, at nakita din naman natin doon sa kanilang shot charts, doon sa hinahawakan shot charts ng uh, Negro Slashers, lahat ng points ng Laguna Lakers galing sa loob nung marker o galing sa loob nung arc which means dun sila nadadali sa loob so ano kailangan pigilin yung second chance points box him out keep him away from the inside para makuha yung rebound Chef, Danny? Okay Okay, huwag na takutin ng taong bayan <laughs> Ira doing a good job of course well, whatever time of day no? kung meron television show 3 in the morning I'm sure Ira would always do a good job in the meantime what do you want me to do Danda? Commercial. We'll take a short break and we'll return swiftly to Laguna. Of course, you know I'm foul done. It is Clay, his third foul. Now adjustments. Let's react to the reports of both TJ and Ira. So, um, maraming concerns in express itong si Ed Cordero. So the team just a tad late in responding to certain situations on the floor, Danny. Well, nung sabihin natin, hindi nag-iisip. Kung nakikita na nila yung trap parating, instead of pulling back, what they're doing is they're trying to get or fall into the trap and the only way to break a trap is to attack the trap knowing that meron kayong nauuna mga kakampi in front of you and in the meantime okay ito yung uh, pasa no? what we'd like to show you here is that they have now opted and thought about how to break that particular press of Negros and it was highly noticeable that Chris Clay was not looking at breaking the press he was looking forward looking for an open team that's even better because Danny pointed out in the first half that they were more concerned with a dribbling more than anything else in the meantime shot clock winding down to 12 De La Rosa in the clear it gets a good look Magandang nilalaro ni Romy De La Rosa already with 13 points. Some additional numbers. Laguna has failed from the outside. They have only scored 4 points from the outside. Most of the points are coming from the inside. 34. Balanchado itong Negro Slasher. 17 against 22. And I'd like to also point out as we start the third quarter, ang Negros, hindi pa pumuputok. 
si John Ferrios at saka si John John Carden. So that oh, might be a okay, big okay. problem for the Ladino Lakers should they start scoring here. Ardell sends it downstairs. That's a big rejection. Ardell, we're talking about explosion. Nothing yet. And a loose ball foul inside us. Leo Batog was in an arm lock there. I think Danny uh, oh, the uh, is it's getting away with too good. much uh, because I think the Lakers are underestimating the fact that he can still the, hit the shot from the outside. And that's the reason why he's still on the floor for Coach Ginoel. He's been getting a lot of playing minutes coming from Coach Ginoel. Alam niya, nakakailangan nila nila yung offensive threat dahil hindi pa nga rin umi-score itong si John Cardell. De La Rosa, still playing young at 34 years of age. That shot he goes in. And Flowers gets the bucket. He has 16 in this game. Let's uh, check the score, 51-47 tally. Negros still with the lead. There's Jonathan Cardell, pulls up. Every time the statistic is passed, he will, they will score. I wonder why. <laughs> he was one, of, one out of eight before going into that shot, and now you have to change it, it becomes two out of nine. In other words, you have to anticipate the statistic. <laughs> Second foul on Cardell. Here's a Volca Steel shot block. Bang, right there. In the meanwhile, offensive foul will be called against Don King Sasuman. That's going to be number three. So the pesky defense of Negros working. On the floor, it's Willar, Cardell, De La Rosa, Batog, and Ferriols for the Negros Slashers. The Laguna Lakers going with a quintet made up of Simon, Sasuman, Clay, Nick Dow, and Flowers. Basically the starting units for both hands. John Adel Gardell with a great crossover. Decides to pass up to Pat. Oh! Who gets it off Jeffrey Flowers and... Itong Negros nabubuhayan sila kasi alam nila na on a half-court offense mukhang maganda ang nilalaro nila. Yes. Itong Laguna Lakers... Parang pagka tinipigil nila yung kanilang fast-breaking game, nahihirapan sila sa kanilang half-court set. That is so correct that Negros is forcing them to play in the half-court. Walar from the rear. He pass De La Rosa. Up, 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 up. Oh, that's a count. But what a swat by Chris Clay. Try to get it at the top of the shot of De La Rosa, but that's going to count. Watch this. It was already above the ring. Clay says, I don't think so, I don't think so. Leo Batog credited, uh, or rather De La Rosa is credited with the basket. In the meantime, here's Clay, using the clutches of De La Rosa momentarily. The shot offline, rebound control, not yet, but finally so. Villar with a great pitch, De La Rosa is gone home free with 17 points. It looks like Laguna may want to call a timeout because Ibinibigay lang nila yung bola kay Chris Clay. Kailangan nila bagay sa isang malalaro who will call the plays for them. Now, believe me on this one. I saw Junuel tell his men, shout defense. And they were all shouting defense, defense. Because nobody's going to cheer for them right now as we take a look at this FedEx fast break. So Junuel is a cheerleader in his <laughs> other life. You know, we're beginning to notice that Laguna without a Jeffrey Flowers, eh, parang silang nagiging donut, nawawalan sila ng isang potential scoring threat in their center, and that's right Jeffrey Flowers. Sure, yes. Laguna is in search of a player who will ignite their game. Could be Chris Clay, could be somebody, could be somebody like B-Boy Simon. Let's see. Clay, yes. 13 to 4 blast by Negros just before that basket. Here's Batog, native of Bacolod City, as Galar finds a way to go home. Ngayon, ang Negros nakakuha ng maraming puntos doon mula sa loob. But um, ito, every time they give the ball to Chris Clay, parang nararamdaman ni Chris na saan kailangan pumuntos, hindi naman kailangan. That will not work, and a loose ball fall off the rebound. Ignatius charged with the 13th foul, his second personal. As we check out, there's no fear, slam, dunk. 
Laguna Lakers need the time. player. <laughs> or, I knew I would make that mistake. I made the mistake, so it won't happen again. So TJ Manotok, uh, you're growing by the inches. No, I will not tell you. I'm being swept. <laughs> TJ, I knew I would make that mistake. It was, it was coming. Oh, well, Vasilides was thinking dunk. But of course, Kingsman also complains about Ira, me, Boch, and Bob. <laughs> They just wondered why Pia is a reason to complain this year. <laughs> Basili, this is on the line, but we do appreciate what Kingsman has done for us through the years. I've kept everyone. Lalo name first natin, ano? Laman airport. Inshape pa rin ako kasi... Mahigpit na yung unang taon, pero matot. Pero okay. Ah, okay. Tumaba ka ng konti. Oh. E paano naman, ang dami natin kinakain pagka nasa probinsya tayo. I'm sure, si Butch Maniego at saka si Bob Novales kumakain na ngayon ng garlic chicken dun sa oh. hotel sa Butuan. Dalawang yun pa. Back to this one. Back up. Fly high, no go! Would there have been traveling there, sir? One wonders. But the referees will call a foul against Leo Batol. That's going to be number four against Batol. Score stands at 61 to 51. That 13 to 4 run really burned the uh, Laguna Lakers. Yes, and talk about aggressiveness. Well, it's a fact that um, the Negro Slash is already with five team fouls here in the third quarter. That's against only one for the Laguna Lakers. But giving up five team fouls and you're up by ten goes to show that you're playing aggressively against the Laguna Lakers. Michael Garcia. This is the free throw and Ignacio. Delamosa could not control the ball. It's on the floor. Finally, Michael Garcia busting out, but jam, De La Rosa, it's on the floor, it's a scramble! One wonders why they put play-by-play -play announcers anyway, because uh, <laughs> you don't know who in the ball. No, I was just so excited, Sam. I was speechless. <laughs> Okay, let's make life very simple, Mr. Is TJ ready? Mr. Manotok, take it away. Guys, I have an injury report for you. Jeffrey Flowers has a bloody nose, and you won't believe why he got it. He got it during the facial dunk of Leo Batog, so he's going to have to sit a while and wait for that nose to stop bleeding. Right? Okay, so he will check on the bleeding as to whether he can come back. I think he's okay. But on the end, I don't know. And chat in the meantime, back to the action. Thanks, DJ, for that report. In the meantime, here's a knock and shot around for an open friend. Who knock and decides to shoot. Go. De La Rosa. This is control. Here comes play. Danny, Mark, check this if this is true. Ang daming tumitira ng kaliwa sa panig ng negros. Hindi alam depends on ng Laguna. Oo. At hirap nga sila dahil hindi nila alam kung saan sila bablang. Kaya... More importantly, because and damit pagkakataon ng negros kung yung hanap puntos, no? especially within that five feet range, no, and dahil uh, wala nga si Jeffrey Flowers na sa bench kasi lupoy para sa Laguna Lakers, so nawawalan sila ng malaki who could easily intimidate those uh, medium range jumpers by the flashers. That means that Clay takes care of the first. Chris Clay. No problem with the free throws. Be wary of Chris Clay despite the lead you have because he can string points together. One remembers that Pampanga Laguna game where he got uh, really on fire. They were down by as much as 14 or 16. Reyes decides to pop. It will not work. That follow up goes nowhere. Rebound foul. Is it Laguna or Negros? Well, it's Laguna against Garcia trying to box out ang hugnatan. So, itong uh, mga malalaki ng negros kahit na nagbibigay sila ng mga easily 2-3 inches away to their opponents, eh, 
masipag talaga eh. Correct. Hinahabot talaga uh-huh. yung ano eh. Kahit na they don't have full control of the ball, as long as they're able to tap it to our team, yun ang pagbali sa kanila. Translation, kapag may check up, yun yung laga talaga. <laughs> no? 61-53, 6 minutes, 44 seconds remaining in the third. Again, Nick, Nabaisia rather winning earlier against the Surigao Warriors. Yes, that's their new name for this season. 99-91 over there at the Orios Gym. That's why we were mentioning Bob Novales and Butch Maniego. Because they covered that game earlier with Lexi Schultz and Ria from Washington. In the meantime, here's Willard on the baseline, picking up the miss. The scoop pass over to Ignatan. Downstairs. Good block, but it's declared a foul. Ignatan's bad habit is that hindi pa niya nasa sa loong bola, nakatingin na siya sa basket, hindi pa niya securely na hawakan yung bola, kaya ang dali niyang uh, depensahan. And if you notice with the Hugnatan move, he'll always swing the ball down low. Bababa niya, no? Bababa niya, because that's where he gets his first step. In the meantime, it will be free throws by Ignacio after Basilides committed his first foul. as we take a look at the gamut of emotions. De La Rosa 34, still changing his head, huh? Siguro kaya ayaw ni Ruben magpahulay ng buhok na sa iba, hindi na sila magpahulay. Oo nga, no? In the backcourt, Nick Dow finally getting it across the play. B-Boy Simon can't squeeze the trigger. Traveling. And talking about their inability to squeeze the trigger from the outside, Laguna, I believe, has not taken a shot from the outside, even from the three-point yes, range. Yes, oh. and that is caused by two things, I guess. The inability of Laguna to set up, and also the press being applied, the pressure defense being applied by Negros. Here's still by Nick now, however, Ignacio quick to respond to that challenge. Ball underneath. Look at that, and this is exactly what Danny Francisco has been pointing out. You know, the Negro Slashers are like fish out of water. <laughs> you know, coaches would always tell players, especially in their lineup, that their opponents are taller, very much taller. You may not be able to control the leather. All you have to do is tap it to an open teammate. And it sends a message to the opponent, at least I'm fighting for this. You're not going to get this easily. Because you don't like somebody like a Cray or Clay or Jeffrey Flowers to just control the boys and say, okay, this is my territory, I, I'm fine with it. I, I'm going to hit my comfort zone and grab 13 to 15 rebounds in a game. But you cannot just take this easy against Laguna. One, they're at home. Two, you have potential scorers there. And they could be playing possum right now, just waiting for the fourth quarter to swing around. But take nothing away from the enthusiasm of Negros that has played a spirited ball game, at least up to this moment with less than six minutes ago in the third period. Here's Ignacio. Ignata. De La Rosa launches. Too strong. Here come the troops. But Clay says, I've had enough of you guys. Simon is up, up and away. Almost a mix by B by Simon. What, does, what do you say when he says, up, up and away? Hindi pumaso. Ognatan! Oh! And this is a... S- <laughs> Flowers landing into um, our head of our technical committee, Mr. Bert Ortiz, who has not had a shower in three days, <laughs> decided to have one right here, right now. Bert can we know from the Atenea uh, quite a player himself. Of course, we're talking of 60 pounds ago. In the meantime, off the inbound. And you don't want to have those kinds of miscues, you very basic miscues na sayang eh, sayang, so lapses, mental lapses, we're talking about mental lapses of the Laguna Lakers remember Laguna finished the first half with 21 turnovers not exactly the best group to win the basketball game seven. closer now but yes it's a three. It's a nine-point lead. Time down to 505 and a foul. 
What Negros is also doing quite superbly here is that the unit on the floor, whether it's the starters, because of what the second unit did so well, now they don't have to look at the bench, worry about is somebody going to hold the fort. They know that they have a team that they can work with. Not much ceiling, but they have a hard-working unit. Alam mo, balik na natin yung report ni Ira Pang Nienba, yung knowing your roles. Ang kagandahan dito, if the second unit will do the roles and play to the hill and get a lead of about five points, may hiya yung mga first stringers. Oh, exactly. Pagka pinalitan ng mga first stringers yung second unit, eh, may hiya sila. They have to sustain the effort thrown in by the second unit. I know you had a great basketball career, Daddy, but when you were, was there a time the second unit, uh, when you had to, when juniors go, and anyway, when you had to show your best yes, against yes. the first thing? But, you know, the second unit can only get better because you're going up against the first stringers. Okay. Day in, day out at practice. Okay. De La Rosa can't nail it. His brother says, don't you dare do that to my kuya. And I will get the loose ball. <laughs> I know, I know. I am the youngest member of this team. Why are you laughing at him? You look like Santa Claus. Put a camera on this guy. He's dying from laughter. There he is. Look at him. Look at him. Santa Claus in February. Yes, so, Cardell. So John Noel is just hoping that Cardell can hit his stride. But Cardell doesn't get it. Here's Bravo. Inside to Flowers. There's a slight block from the rear, which is enough. Reyes, ball taken all. Reyes out. Passes too late. Ah, got it. Ignacio says, I will attack. Cardell, come on! Negros is playing with fire. But you know, to put it sadly, yung fire nila, hindi talaga yung umaapoy, no? Alam uh, lang nila, timing. Kung kailan natin i-ignite, kailan natin pipigilin. Exactly, good point. Parang gas range, yung know, kinokontrol mo yung uh, temperature. Ops! Hey, boy, Simon, well... Just a little hot under the collar. The yeah. long disappointment his game is not in sync. You know, but you've got to appreciate the, the coaching staff of the Laguna Lakers as we take a look at a foul given up by Reyes. Wala naman eh. Let's stay with this one. You want to give it on. But the referee was quick. He was in the middle of the action. And during that time, I was looking at Coach Ed Cordero. He was a step onto the floor, calling B-Boy and telling B-Boy, you've got to settle down. I don't know about it, because it's Good point, yes. And we don't normally see that in a B-Boy Simon. We only see that in a B-Boy Simon pagka hindi talaga nakakascore ng marami itong si B-Boy Simon. Yes. So maaaring napipikon siya sa defensa itong Aldrich Reyes. Nice. Remember so, uh, so clearly there's, there was a feature we did where B-Boy Simon Casually and calmly admitted that one of my defects as a player is that uh, I do get a little hot under the collar in the game and he's then coach Bonnie Garcia would remind him constantly and Bonnie Garcia is still in the audience right now scouting this game because his team plays Negros come Sunday over there in Pampanga. Well, nakakatakot, uminit si Bigo Simon, hindi uminit yung ulo, uminit yung kamati para sa Laguna. Long time does not work. And Laguna still having some difficulty trying to box out on the guys of the Negro Slashers. Garcia will be called for his third personal foul. This used to be my playground. Song by Madonna, which applies to Bonnie Garcia. Almost a year and a half as coach of the Laguna Lakers. He's moved on to be a consultant for Pampanga, he's now the head coach there. His team winning against Ibukino in their first outing just last Wednesday. De La Rosa takes care of the first. He's originally from Kapookan, Leyte. Has been around, has even been on the national team. Good game so far by De La Rosa, 18 points. Mm -hmm. 
70 to 60 as we enter the last three and 43. Quarter number three. Garcia's trying to post up. Bravo attacks the baseline. He used to play with Negros, keep that in mind. Well, that's going to be number three against Johnny Del Cardell. And very unusual matchup. I didn't want a Negros last year. They're putting a Cardell on a Bravo and a sort of player Reyes on a B-Boy Simone. And B-Boy Simone is having some difficult time trying to wiggle away from Aldrich Reyes. You know, my friend, I think I'm just hungry. I'm taking a look at Jun Noel. He looks like a master chef walking along <laughs> the sideline and he's telling his younger cooks, Rolly Bonaflor and Robert Season, uh, to take care of the small things. Let me check the uh, dishes as they pass by for approval. I like their choreography as they move along the sideline. May nakakaburuan ito si Ruel Bravo at saka si Coach Jun Noel. Pagkapasok ng unong filtro ni Ruel Bravo, napatingin siya kay Coach eh. Titingin ulit si Gurel. Dira. <laughs> Eight point lead, not the safest of leads, not when you have a good team like Laguna up against you. Here's Cardell, still no explosion for Jonathan. Fall away. Yes. That's nine points by Cardell. Maybe it's beginning. Nedra's doing an excellent job of keeping Laguna. And this sounds like a fun, but they're at bay. In the meantime, hook pass inside, Garcia! Good pass coming from Jeffrey Flowers as he drew the double team, spotting up Garcia. And lang, yan lang yun naman ang kulang ng Laguna eh. Pagka dino double team yung mga lalaki nila, do not hesitate on going for the cut or the basket. There's Reyes trying to shuffle again, Speedball Simon, and there's Bravo trying to knock Gardel out of position. And Bravo acknowledges the foul that will be the good 16 foul, second on Bravo. We'll take a break here. We've got a ceasefire, 241 remaining. Eight point lead by the Slashers. Uh, we will have the Metro Stars up against the Suriga Warriors, and that will be at the Orioles Gym in Butuan City. In the meantime, the Cebu Gems and the Lakers take on each other. That's right here. Where will you be working? I'll be working on Sunday. Ah, break us a Saturday. Yeah, break us a Saturday. Okay, and where will you be? Pampanga? Pampanga, yeah. Ayo, yeah. tayo na naman yun. Flowers. Yes, sir. You know, for a big guy, he has a very soft spot, especially oh, no. from the perimeter, knowing na may tao sa harapan niya. So magandang control ni Jeffrey Flowers from the perimeter area. Six-point game. Here's Reyes. That's traveling. Good call. Good call. That was a good call. I think we've had many instances wherein that has been called quite strictly this particular season. Lauer is standing a tall 6'7", 6'8". Each is at 6'8". And immediately there's an offensive foul call against, called rather, against Maduna. It is McDowell with his fourth personal foul. You know, talk about the mental lapses. You, Laguna must be able to capitalize on these errors made or turnovers made by the Negro Slashers should they want to get back into the ball game. Although they're just players, down by six points. Sinabi nga natin, so, um, lead management, magandang pinapakita so far. Yes, game. that is very correct. In the meantime, if you're wondering why we are moving at a snail's pace here in the third, simply because the Negro Slashers have committed 12 team fouls compared to Laguna 6. So the uh, two free throw penalty is in effect against Negros, while Laguna is uh, hampered with the one on one bonus. In the meantime, is there a technical here? Yes, it is on Sasuman. Delay of the game? Yes, it's a delay of the game violation. Aldrich Reyes will hit the bench and Maway will lar. The flying fish of the uh, Negro Slashers is back on the floor. Well, the Negro Slashers getting fresh players yes. off the bench. Good point. Cardell, right swing. That will not work. 
It's a human gliding gracefully into his front court. Simon over to Flowers. Ognathan trying his best against, Flo against Flowers. That's good enough because they grab the ball away. Flowers was telling his teammates, you better cut, guys. There's no more power in the shot. Oh, Jeffrey Flowers, no? Sa kanyang spin move, eh. Talagang hinahanap lang nila. Tutok, eh. Tawag natin yung tutok barok, eh. Pero pagka mapigil ka, you have to get that splint on your wrist going for you. What's so amusing, Katya? Kaya ako nakatawa ng kapiraso dito. Eh, dahil sabi niya, cut, cut. Kasi hindi po masakit yun. Hindi ba player talaga? Kung at kayo, kayo oh. eh, pagka tumira ko hindi pumasok, oh. nandun kayo sa ilang, eh, pag makuha niyo yung bola pa, <laughs> follow up. Maway Willar, also a native of Negros. Lead management, yes, indeed, according to Danny Francisco, and rightfully so, the Slashers have done a good job of keeping Laguna at a distance. B-Boy Simon, no. Dela Rosa, better position against Garcia. Well, you don't see the effort in a possible offensive rebound by the Laguna Lakers, unlike the effort being shown by the Negros Nationals. Yes. Magdal, baseline, rings out. By the way, as we continue with the season, each game will be important because the cumulative records of the teams in both conferences, in both the intra phase and this, the crossover phase, will be carried, and that's why you understand the intensity being displayed here. Ognathan is charged with a foul, that will be his second, and we have a total of 13, yes, you heard me right, 13 team fouls against the Slashers, as you check out that Volkasil Dikit Na Dikit shot block. Ignacio will get some minutes on the bench while Bat Og reports back in. Now, also hurting Laguna Tad here is the absence of Alvin Peng as, uh, to nurse an injury. I think the experience of Peng would be a compliment and his aggressiveness as well to get with, with Flowers as you check out Alvin Peng there. Well, especially when he mans the paint time to box out on opponents. Malaking bagay itong si Alvin Peng. They're feeling the absence of Alvin Teng with regards to getting the rebound set, but um, then again, if you're injured, you expect somebody else to pick up from where you left off. And two free throws missed by Jeffrey Flowers. Entering the last 45 seconds of the third. Willard trying to whirl around. Willard dips it Sounds like the OBB from last year. With, our, with that whirlwind shot, nearly a violation. 23 seconds, here's the Suman. Willard continuing to be a pest as he tries to hound. And that is that is what defense does. Mean. Yes, and the hounding defense of the Negro Slashers, eh, it is forcing the Laguna Lakers na talagang magmadali. Magmadali, magmadali, maghesitate. Kaya itong Laguna naman, they are just falling to the trap. Nagmamadali sila, hindi na lang kung yes. kanina ipapasa dahil naman galaw ng galaw ang mga ibang mga taga-Laguna. Ardell, Wellar, over to Bat Og. That will not work. Sa Suman, there will be time for one final game. Ooh, at a chance. We're done with 36 minutes. We'll need... 12 more to complete action here in uh, Laguna. But the Slashers telling their uh, hosts we're very much in this game. We'll be right back. Direct, hindi ka mabaw na ahalata na nabibigyan ka ng pagkakato na makita. Ibig sabihin, kailangan na natin ng libre. Yes, ang hina mo namang makapick up, ano ha? In behalf of the management and staff of the NBA. <laughs> Happy birthday, Al. Chris Paddy knocks it out. Oh, beauty. It's a three that cuts down the lead to seven. And this is what Laguna wants to do here. Storm out of the gates quickly. But Danny, I can time out. Well, they're going to play. And that's the reason why Negros 
call this timeout. It's a 30, but we'll be right back. De La Rosa playing volleyball, it's a jump. Yes, slash just keep it because of the privilege error and Sasuman. Still getting to know the rules here because uh, you're talking of plays back in. Now, referee Cruz is trying to explain it to Sasuman how we do it here in the NBA. He was really hoping for a jump. Perios is back in the game, but he has not been really a factor. Sasuman and Wellar have a thing going there. They're really bumping each other. Perios will twirl. No, sir. Rebound picked up by Sasuman. Playing aggressively here. And if they score on this offensive play, he's got a game, sir. And it looks like it's Chris Baden, Akana, para sa Laguna, may foul na ibinigay si Hugnatan. I'd just like to say that if you notice the 10 players on the floor right now, not one has sweated heavily, no? If you notice, no? Oh, yes, yes. We're well, already in the fourth quarter, but 10 minutes and 49 to go. Wala talaga yung player na namamaawis ng... Talagang kumawis na players, no? So maaari rin maganda rin yung pacing ng dalawang coaches so far. Like Clay saw a lot of minutes on the bench in the third. Maybe he is really fresh for this the quarter. And Baden, hey guys, why do you like our tables? Well, the yeah. uh, momentum in and Baden with some experience and uh, years here already knew exactly what to do. This very awesome. Now, Nekros, on the other hand, will have to continue playing its game despite this upsurge. That'll count. Yes, that'll count. De La Rosa has done the yeoman's job here. Sasuman picks up foul number four, but De La Rosa with a 21-point game. De La Rosa last year averaged 13.8 per ball game. No problem with the bonus. De La Rosa also had a 30 point game during the regular season. Last year could be well in range for a big one here along that line. Sasuma can't nail it. Garcia flying high, but nowhere to go. And Willar says, can we inbound? No, somebody has to touch it first. And Laguna still struggling to get those points. And if they do want to get Jeffrey Flowers involved, they've got to run a half-court offense yes. type of a game. Correct. Ardell, in a dribbling battle with Clay. The shot will bounce out. Rebound controlled by Flowers. Here's Clay, zigzagging, looping it in. And it's now down to a six-point game. Six-point lead, that is. Clay with 18. You know, some significant numbers in the third quarter. Which shows that Negros again out rebounding Laguna, 17 to 11. And in turnovers, Laguna committing 11 turnovers as against only five by Negros. Now Perios continues to miss badly. But almost every angle, Garcia off the wrong foot, but Bade has been the spark plug. Just down to four points. Marios, doubtful about his game now. The you know, Negros may want to make some changes in their present lineup by bringing Ega Ignacio. Outside to Mawe with our loads up a three, and a chance, but Flowers has it. Chance now to cut down the lead, which now stands at four. Time down to 8.45. Garcia crossover. Up, 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 in a way. And what a run by the Laguna Lakers. And this forces Negros to call a timeout. Wake up call. Wake up call. And they're roaring here. We'll be back. Out of six from the field this quarter, but the Lakers Mostly on the layups by Chris Clay, together with Chris Bade, 5 out of 7, and 11 to 3 
blast by the Laguna Lakers. They are in this ball game. Back in business. Ignacio begging for the ball. Ruben De La Rosa hounded. Shot clock at 12. Ruben to for yards. Got it. What a time for it to happen. Takes the uh, wind out of the sails of the crowd. Michael Garcia. Chris Bade, the smart plug. No, not on that trip. Rebound, Ignacio. I like the outlet passes of Ignacio. De La Rosa charges through. Four quick points. Two from Carriol, two from De La Rosa. Michael Garcia. No. Flowers up, up, and in. Wide open basketball. Yep. Sino na lang ang pwede pumake up sa momentum sa uh, mag-sistering up ng mga ilang frutos. Ariel's currently 3 out of 16 from the field. I'm down to 7.25. Ferriols gets it to roll in. Well, as they say, it's not how you start, but how you finish, I guess. It looks like this is the wake-up call for John Ferriols. He has to pick up on his scoring. Michael Garcia with a fine crossover downstairs. We got the body who charges. No! They are just allowing too many points inside the shaded area for both teams. Exactly. John and Cardell takes care of that one. Ayral, let's go to you. Okay, major trading baskets na sila ngayon. No? Pero yung sinasabi ni Coach Junoel kanina, no? hindi nila, binibigyan nila ng momentum. Itong si uh, Chris Clay, yun dahilan kung bakit nakakagawa ka agad. Gayun din si uh, Garcia, kaya nakakagawa itong mga to. Dapat pakahawak pa lang ng bola, either pinupokpok na nila o dinodobot double team na nila para hindi na makaporma. Tapos ipokpok nila yung press nila. Tapos pag nakuha nila yung bola, takbo agad na mabilis. Chef Danny? Which exactly was what they were doing in the first three quarters. You know, it's just that they do not want to have the ball in the hands of Chris Clay. He's just too dangerous. What they want to do is for Clay to give up the ball early into their half-court set. But the problem being is that the other Chris, Chris Bade, has burned them with seven points. Mabilis na seven points na mula kay Chris Bade. He started the quarter with a three-point basket. Time down to six and forty. We're moving swiftly here. Six-point lead by the Slashers. Simon for Flowers. The hook will not drop in. Reyes looking for a foul. We have traffic at the point line. Simon launches. It will not work. Rebound. And Ignacio, he's not the type to make it easy. Very honest. Great play. Don't you love? Just love the way Ignacio gets rid of the ball. Now Laguna will have to settle down. Foul. By De La Rosa, that's Ruben. That's going to be number two against Ruben De La Rosa. Check out this FedEx fast break. Of course, with FedEx, we live to deliver. I was just about to say that he cannot allow Chris Clay to get the ball in the middle because he just has too much space to work on. Ito na naman sa, he's going to go down the middle, sir. Oops, he was looking for a foul. He was leading into a foul, but that works. Of course, there are 15 different ways of saying, B-Boy Simon, three. On the other end, there's a block. De La Rosa recovers. Crowd yelling that maybe he has not established position. Double dribble. Ed Cordero's unique advantage is he came from the technical committee. He is not worried about the calls. Somehow he knew that it would even out it looked that like De La Rosa had not established position, but eventually a double dribble violation brought about some justice. Well, De La Rosa just didn't know where to pass the ball. Yes. Everybody was covered. That That's why he thought he said. Dribble again. Clay says, are you with me? Nick Dow goes up with no leather, but it's fouled. Down low by Andre Treyas, number three against him. And we've got to check out the team fouls because that's going to be important getting into the end game. That's number four. Team fouls for the Negro Slashers. That's against only one by Laguna. Five and 26 in the balance here. Nick Dow is on the line. 
John McDowell's course does not work. He's 6'5". He's originally from Pampanga. Uh, has had some experience uh, in the Philippine Basketball League as well as with the FEU Tamaraos. 23 years old. Crossover by Reyes. Has to apply the brakes. De La Rosa jammed by McDowell. Bade. Chance to cut it to two. Yes! You were right. He was playing possum for the first three quarters. When it comes the most, the payoff period, he has exploded. Play with six big points here. Good fake by Ignacio, does not force the issue. Outside to Cardell, two-point game. Cardell with a big 360 spin, but too much of a spin. Cardell complaining that how can that be traveling? I've done that all my life. And he just shot off to John Perios. The one who called that traveling violation was behind John Cardell. So, hindi rin alam na refere siguro kung na-i-dish off na. Hindi na natin dito ang galaw ni Johnny Del Cardell. Just a little too early. Let's move on this one because he will really spin here. No, that's not the play. As we penetrate, we're playing. We're tied up. Last time we were tied was 50 points ago at 39 apiece. Welcome to a brand new ball game. Play, zigzagging. Bade rejected from the rear. Flowers up, up, and no rebound controlled by Ignacio. Ignacio with eight rebounds in this game. Here's Gardell. Gardell get a from Ferrios, yes. Ang ganda ng pick na yun. At talagang hinanap ni Johnny Del Cardell. He just robbed off Chris Clay against John Ferrios. Hindi yung pick na hindi gumalaw talaga. Ferrios is one huge pick. Clay. De La Rosa sticking to him by Blue Flowers. Come on! with his fourth personal foul and the fifth on Nick was as a unit. Away with Lars back in for Reyes. Watch this play anew. Now late yung recovery on the defensive end. Correct. Yes. And Reyes just could, couldn't do anything but to give up the foul against Flowers. Tied at 91, Laguna could be back in the lead. Last time they led was way back at 14-9. Oh, it won't be so. Chance now for the Slashers to regain the upper hand. Ardell colliding with Clay. In the meantime, Ardell outside the Tela Rosa. Tela Rosa pass right of the key, offline completely under the basket. One second on the shot clock, it goes in! Where did that come from? Coming from Maui Willard. Full time out. We'll take a short break. Let's listen to what you've got. Guys, Laguna is obviously riding high on this momentum. And then the last time out, Coach Edgar said the primary option is still Jeffrey Flowers. However, he doesn't want him to go baseline because he'll get double teamed there. And Jeff himself in the timeout spoke out to his teammates. Guys, I want you to cut in the lane when I post up. Back to you guys. Exactly what he was indicating with his sign language. Thanks a lot, DJ. That's what. Ball rolls out very yours. To the final two minutes brought to you by FedEx. We live to deliver. Oh, 
coaches with a lot of decision making to do here in the final two minutes. Well, it's a good idea, I and mean, uh, you know, getting to the last two minutes there. The they just switched off their pressing defense. No? In full court pressing line, half court lap, yes. yeah, they just switched it off during the fourth. I mean, fatigue, no? I mean, fatigue, no? but um, probably by combination of the coach you know, well, and he felt that uh, it disadvantageous to him if he was going But uh, Negro still on top by one point at the moment. Last minute and 52. Perioz in the corner to Willar. Willar inside to Perioz. Difficult pass to start with. It's on the floor. Nick Dallas to stand up. And Laguna has it with a golden opportunity. They grab the lead. Garcia to play. Downstairs, Nick Dow is rejected. Ignacio doing a marvelous defensive job. It's in my... Oh, I thought it would land in my hands. Only two seconds on the shot clock. Off Laguna. If the defense can only hold for Negros. Nick Dow. Bob's it. It does not go. It had a good chance. But Negros must begin to think of playing to win. Of not playing to lose. Not to lose, that is. Delaros has that in mind. He goes through, but it's jammed. Downstairs, flowers his pass. Boy, Delaros says, thank you. Three on one. Well done. Well done. He was going for the spectacular, Danny, but first, some a big moment first, a dunk. Uh, presented by No Fear. Absolutely no fear on that one. And we've got a timeout. We'll be back. Okay, Palik, you came with her. It was a great chance for the Slashers to go to as much as a three-point lead. But Danny? Mavi Villar bobbling on the ball. And, you know, he should have issued out that pass. Pagkatanggap niya, kailangan touch pass na lang. Because they clearly had the numbers three against one. Or go for the layup yeah. itself. But the feeling of Mau is that he wanted to draw the defense to him by going in deep. No? Yes. Take a look at some rejections. Positive ones, that is. Lakers with 10. That's against the six of the slashers. But ito yung sinasabi natin at giving up because sigurado na kalusot na sa isang tao yan at um, help defense sa lamang yan inbound safely in Laguna has a full timeout and a 30 while Negros is left with one timeout one full timeout good crossover by Clay lost it downstairs Powers with 9 on the shot clock rims out it does not go in Rebound Ignacio, quickly getting rid of it. Cardell, oh, nearly not ready. Well, this is a crucial call. I'm going to referee. see that again. Yeah, we have to see that and see if Cardell really committed an offensive foul. borderline we shall hang on we should listen in to one of the timeouts here it will be Laguna ball down by one let's try to listen into Laguna Twenty two seconds remaining. That's the timeout scenario. Well, Negros cannot afford to give up a foul, or else they're going to send somebody to the free throw line. And we're going to go to Chris Clay for the last second shot. This is for the win. 
This is for the win. Since they have called it that way against Cardell, they might as well call it that way against Polaris <laughs> well, because for the sake of their consistency as of the moment. But I really felt the Cardell's call against Cardell was It was very ball. light, yeah. It was very light. However, this will send Chris Clay to the free throw line for a one-in-one -one situation. Russell free throws. Negro still has a timeout to call, that will not work. Yes, it will. Well, where will it go? Looks like it's Laguna's ball, yes. Timeout by Laguna. And we shall listen in. Could be, let's try to listen into both, but let's start with Negros first. A disconsolate chant there because they feel they've been getting the short end of the stick here. Getting to the last 20 seconds and that started off with the offensive foul call against Janet Del Cardell. Well, the point here for the Negro Slasher serve is that they just want the ball out of Chris Clay's hand. And since it's going to be an inbound throw in under the ring of the Laguna Lakers, they do not want Jeff Flowers to get that ball somewhere near the basket. Exactly the mind of the Slashers. There's a short pass. McDonald can't get it. Clay. On the line, had it gone in, it would not have counted. Only two seconds remaining and it will be Negros ball. Now let's try to see that last play again, if possible. Because I don't think Laguna got the play that they wanted. But let's, uh, here we go. Well, what a block by John Ferrios against uh, Nick Dow. And they wanted the ball to be in Chris Clay's hands. It is that Maganda is switching defense against Juan and Negros. He would not have taken it from that yes. distance. No? Hindi, hindi siya comfortable doon. Hindi, hindi siya comfortable. Hindi lang yun. Nakita niya yung game clock. Meron pa, reading about four seconds. So why force an errant three-point basket? So might as well give it to B-Boy Simon who was open. Pero si B-Boy naman nakikitaan na tumatapak doon sa sideline. So, Negros getting some breaks here. Let's listen in. If the last time out was disconsolate, uh, suddenly there's renewed life. Yep. Did you hear that fight nila kanina? Fight. Oh. Pero ito, sigurado magpa-foul itong Laguna Lakers just to be able to stop the clock. But only two seconds, somebody might just break away from the Negros camp. And a foul. It's on Simon. Simon. 
Okay, uh, we might not have time to formally present the award to him, but it looks like uh, we have chosen as our most outstanding performer of the game. Of course, none other than Romy De La Rosa for the Negro Slashers, 22 points, 8 rebounds. Alvarez Reyes, dribble the time away, less than a second. Laguna had their chances, but they just ran out of steam and the mood of the ball game did not go towards their direction in the end. Inbound. Bade. Desperation. Big effort by Bade. But Negros escaping with a win. And what a win by Negros, sir. That's an upset of sorts. Yes. 95-94, a team that didn't feel it had the size going into this encounter. Gives a lot of speed, spunk, and hustle to be able to fashion out this victory. Okay, let's check out our Milo best play. This best play is brought to you by Milo, the official energy drink. Bade, chance to cut it to two! You were right, he was playing possum for the first three quarters. Just about ready to um, end our NBA day here, this Wednesday. I will be honest, I'm trying to put on my suit here. <laughs> and it's a marvel of... Uh, Anatomy, how you can wiggle through it in less than uh, two minutes. But what a great day of basketball. Uh, Slashers coming here and saying, uh, sorry, we won't be very nice visitors. That's true. And um, Negros, again, we were being a bit of overconfidence on the part of the Laguna Lakers. Negros really managed the lead quite well getting into the last quarter. It was just that, nung binigay na kay Chris Clay, Chris Clay, in instinct niya, no? If I can get my team back, and it has to be me, I'm going to take it. And yun ang ginawa ni Chris Clay. Towards the end, medyo masama yung mga tawag natin, no? towards the end. Pero, the end of it all, Negros got the break. Yes, exactly. And our complete results, Nueva Ecija winning against Surigao earlier, 99-91. to 91. Let's take a look at the schedule come Saturday, and let's listen to what Danny has to say about the schedule. Metro starts against Surigao. Both teams coming off losses, Danny. Yes, and um, struggling, so to speak, but it's very early into our crossover cup. And it's speaking of, of losses, all these teams will be coming out of losses <laughs> on Saturday. So expect them, well, the four teams to be very hard yes. for them to be able to get into the win column, sir. Okay, and it's been a pleasure presenting to you the NBA today, this Wednesday. Final shot from your turn. Well, you know, we've been having a lot of exciting ball games, but uh, sabihin nga natin, uh, towards the middle of the season, mararamdaman na natin talaga kung sino yung nagsisettle down ng mga teams. Yes. Right now, it's just pure energy. Everybody just wants to get out of the gates, so to speak, and um, later on, they will begin to settle down, makikita na natin yung talagang strengths and weaknesses oh, yes. ng bawat koponan. Okay, in behalf of all of us here, TJ, Ira, you, Danny, Francisco, and your truly self cement in behalf of the birthday boy, the huggable, <laughs> cuddly director, Al Neri. Good night, Philippines. This is your NBA.